Ever since I was a kid, one of my biggest heroes was Bob Ross. He's probably the first person to get me interested in art, even before filmmaking. I mean, this was the guy who made such an impact, he probably helped shape me into who I am today. And after all that, for some reason, there's never been a Cinemassacre video dedicated to Bob Ross. Well, I'm gonna change that right now. For those unfamiliar, he was a landscape painter who hosted the instructional TV show, The Joy of Painting, which aired on PBS from 1983 to 1994. In the show, he would show you how to paint an entire painting in 30 minutes, real time, from start to finish. And these are oil paints. Anyone who's painted with those know they take forever to dry, and traditional painters would wait for it to dry before applying new layers, but Bob Ross used the wet-on-wet -wet method where he would blend the layers together. This technique probably became more common thanks to him. He, of course, didn't invent it. In fact, he was inspired by a previous host from Germany, Bill Alexander, who became Bob's mentor. The format of Bob's show was similar to Bill's. It was a very low-key, simple production, just a guy painting in front of a black background. There was no music while he was talking, so you're able to hear all the brush strokes. All right. This is where you take out of your frustrations and hostilities. And that's one of the most relaxing qualities about the show. The sound and rhythm of the brush sweeping side to side and the knife scraping against the canvas. Today, there always seems to be a fear of the audience getting bored. Everything has to be fast paced and loud to keep the excitement. And that's why going back to watching Bob Ross is like an oasis in today's oversaturated and overstimulated entertainment industry. There. See there? When you watch Bob paint, it's kind of a fascinating phenomenon because it has this addicting quality where as soon as you see the first brush stroke, you can't stop watching until you see the whole painting finished. And the way it comes together is like magic. He starts with nothing, makes a bunch of formless blobs, and next thing you know, you got some mountains. He just loads two different colors on a knife, scrapes it, and what do you know? Looks like rocks. Then he dabs that fan brush to make those trees, and the natural shape of the bristles look like leaves. Then he'll make a lake and drag the grass below the waterline, and now you have reflection. And then he'll add some dark, ugly blob, and you're like, oh, no, he ruined it. But just you wait. He adds some layers to it, and before you know it, oh, I see what you're doing. You did it again, Bob. It's like he's got it. He's always got it. It takes some skill to finish a painting that quick. Some people may wonder if it's edited down, but no, from what I understand, they'd edit out a technical error here and there, but for the most part, what you're seeing is real time. I remember back then hearing a rumor that um, it was fake and that the painting was already done and it was hidden on the canvas and that he was somehow scraping away to make it reveal, but that's not true at all. Although his paintings weren't as improvised as they may seem, he would actually paint the same painting beforehand and then keep it off camera to look at for reference. So he planned it in advance, but that doesn't change that it's still real impressive, especially that he paints it while talking and under the pressure of a TV production. You'd think he'd be real stressed out, but no, he's one of the coolest TV personalities ever, always speaking in a calm, soothing voice, similar to Mr. Rogers. He was on a similar mission to spread positivity and happiness. He encouraged people to paint, and many people would find it daunting, but he seemed to speak directly to the viewer, saying, you can do it. He eased away any hesitation or fear of failure. He made you want to get up, get some paints, get some brushes, and just go for it. Within a half a dozen paintings, you'll be so comfortable with this. <laughs> You won't believe you ever had any difficulty with it. Well, I was watching Bob Ross when I was 11, 12 years old, and I did exactly that. I tried my best to imitate his paintings. Um, well, they're nowhere near as good as Bob Ross. I mean, sure, I was just a kid, but I don't think I could have done that much better today. On TV, Bob made it look so easy. He made it look too easy because it's actually really hard and I used to get frustrated all the time, but Bob wouldn't say that. He would just say anybody can paint. Um, but I think he was just being really nice. Anybody can do this. It didn't matter who you were, 
He wanted to encourage everybody. He also listened to people. Fans would write in or he'd meet them and he would talk about it on the show. He once said somebody um, said they couldn't paint because they had a shaky hand. And Bob said, well, that means you're one step ahead of me because trees are never straight. I mean, that natural shakiness of your hand will reproduce the spontaneous curving of the branches. He even heard from somebody who was colorblind. He said, that doesn't matter either, and then made a painting in grayscale. And of course, his famous quote was, there's no mistakes, only happy accidents. He always said, it's your world. Maybe add a happy tree here, maybe give him a little friend. Okay, we'll give him a little friend. Just to think trees could be happy or have a friend. I mean, he doesn't only make you appreciate painting, he makes you appreciate nature or even just being alive for that matter. I mean, this is probably the most positive human being I can think of. He was in fact a huge nature lover. He'd rescue injured animals and nurse them back to health before returning them to the wild. Often he'd bring them on the show. So he'd be in the middle of a painting and then all of a sudden he's feeding baby squirrels or birds. I always loved when he'd show the animals. It doesn't have much to do with the painting. So it was kind of unexpected and funny, but endlessly charming. In general, he was just a funny guy. I thought today we'd do something that's really cold, so you better get out your big coat and put it on. Uh, the biggest recurring joke that never gets old was when he'd clean the brush. He'd dip it in the paint thinner and then beat the brush against the ladder, which is really fun if you've ever tried it. I would shake it off and then... Um, Bob enjoyed it so much that no matter how many shows he's done it, he's always had that same smile and says, Beat the devil out of it. <laughs> Just beat the devil out of it. And then he'd usually follow up by saying something like, I'll cover everybody within a half mile radius. Oh, the cameraman over there knows now to wear a raincoat. It just it never got old. Oh, and about the raincoat, that's another thing. Oil paint is really messy. When I painted mine, I'd always get paint on myself. It would get on the brush handle, uh, onto my finger, and then I'd touch my ear or my nose, and by the end, you know, there's paint everywhere. But Bob Ross, not only does he come out clean, he wears nice clothes. I'd be wearing old pajamas or something, but he's got a dress shirt and a gold watch. I don't know, but that looks like a nice watch. Who would paint with that on? I've never seen him paint people. Sometimes there was a log cabin, but it always seemed deserted. I think his paintings were always meant to show nature undisturbed, a place where you'd imagine to be simple and peaceful. And for such a peaceful, calm guy, it's surprising to know Bob Ross was a sergeant in the Air Force for 20 years. Just imagine Bob Ross yelling at someone to clean the toilet or do push-ups. Meanwhile, painting became his hobby, and he said after a rough day, he could find freedom on the canvas. And after he retired from the Air Force, he never wanted to raise his voice at anyone again. And there we have the chill dude we know. Unfortunately, when I was watching Bob Ross as a kid, little did any of us know he wouldn't be around too much longer. In 1995, he died of lymphoma at the age of 52. Way too soon. But he hasn't gone anywhere. I think he'd be happy to know people still watch him today. Thanks to Twitch and YouTube, he's gained a bunch of new fans. He's been spoofed on Family Guy, Deadpool, Ralph Breaks the Internet. His signature paint brands are still being made. And I'm always seeing new merch pop up everywhere. Bob Ross costumes, mugs, bobbleheads, gift cards, lunch boxes, and even underwear. And finally, in the fall of 2019, for the first time, some of his paintings were displayed in the Franklin Park Art Center in Virginia. So I'm glad that this childhood hero of mine who I once thought nobody else would remember is still just as popular as ever. <laughs>